good morning everyone uh starting off this session so i hope you all can see my screen so in today's agenda we'll be kicking off the event with the uh, few introductions and then we'll uh hand over the stage to nan uh, so that he can take us through the omni studio journey this has the session going to be a beginner friendly so ensure you take notes and like uh you're making most out of the session the session would be followed up by a q a session will also be opening q a uh, option so make sure if you have any question you log it there so that uh, the speaker can take it up and answer that accordingly at the end we have a kahoot planned uh, and the winner gets a swag so watch out on that and pay extra attention to the session so that uh, you'll be able to answer most of them so without any ado further uh, starting off with the introduction uh, we have sagar here sagar is delhi developer group leader and also founder of delhi dreaming uh, he's a journey to salesforce mentor and speaker and alongside like he ho holds uh, several accolades like einstein air champion and platform champion and uh, it's me i'll be a host for today so my name is himanshu uh, himanshu pandey i currently serve as technical lead at accenture i'm a community speaker uh mentor ei yeah, and in inclusion and diversity advocate uh i'm a multi cloud certified enthusiast apart from my tech pursuits i'm a harvard business review ascent member some of my interests includes uh being a full time dog dad i love debating uh always up to get new tattoos and everything about gender equality you can connect with me uh this is my linkedin handle so will not hold on much so we'll move on to our main part of the day that is a presentation uh, we are excited to have nand aroda with us today who will be sharing his insights on omni studio a quick introduction about nand he is senior uh, technology consultant at salesforce he is nine times salesforce certified and an omni studio expert so nand the stage is all yours would you mind sharing your screen and uh, taking us through the omni studio journey sure thank you so much himanshu okay. um um oh, okay let me share my screen one second so hello and welcome everyone so welcome to the salesforce saturday actually uh, in today's session i'll be your presenter and i hope you get to take something useful today Okay, moving on. I want to take a moment to thank you all for this uh, joining this session and trusting us with your valuable personal time, and we'll make sure it's worth it. So for this today's session in agenda, I'll be covering. Uh, I'll be starting with a quick introduction. Then we'll talk about what is what in your Omni Studio. Then we'll we'll see how we can use Omni Studio in our daily lives. before we begin just a quick disclaimer that all the information that i'm be sharing today is in my personal capacity these are my personal opinions and does not represent the views or official stance of salesforce okay now uh, imanshu has already introduced me uh, but i want to take a moment uh, to tell you about myself uh, i am a senior technical consultant and a uh, global delivery center gdc as we call it in salesforce i have 7 years of experience in salesforce domain and uh, in these my uh, and in these uh, years i have uh, delivered multiple salesforce implementations for customers across the globe design implementation and integration have been my forte and i've worked in these verticals majorly Okay, I actually attended my first uh, Delhi Trailblazer Community Group event around two months back, and I'm nothing but grateful to be a presenter here today. Okay, let's let's dive right into it. So, the what and why? What is Omnisurian? Why do we need it? Well, this is the definition I found online that Omnisurian is a powerful low-code and suit of digital engagement tool that simplifies the creation of custom application within salesforce ecosystem easy right well uh, so omni salesforce let me like just give you a little details what this means salesforce has always been an advocate for 
no code or low code applications right and omniscient is just a step in that direction so salesforce uh, sorry not salesforce omni studio provides us tools a set of tools which enables the developers to create custom ui without writing a single line of code okay and uh, we all have uh, i believe worked on salesforce platforms so we know that to create custom uis we have a few options like we have, we can use flows screen flows to uh, to display a custom ui we can also create use lwcs or or applications right and now we have omni studio as well and uh, not just that omni studio also helps us integrate data into these experiences so we are creating custom uis but and that ui would require data right omni studio enables us to provide data to those experiences those uis without again writing a single line of single line of code and it we can show data that resides in salesforce and outside of salesforce as well so if you want to fetch data from some other enterprise application you can use you do that um, without writing apex or anything so if i have to summarize it omni studio essentially offers the power of lwc and apex at a fraction of level level of effort right and uh, yeah that's pretty much it about the high level over overview of omni studio now omni studio is a package which can be divided which tools can be divided into three layers okay one is we have digital experience layer then we have the service management layer and then the developer experience layer now digital experience layer is your uh, the ui layer okay it has tools for developers and designers to create custom ui with salesforce styling okay um, so you can apply custom styling as well but we try to keep it consistent with salesforce because at the end everything is going to reside in salesforce so you can use slds styling as well uh, in in these digital experiences so flexcard and omni studio uh, sorry flexcard and omni script are part of those of that digital experience layer and then coming to the service management this is our backend layer okay so it provides tools to perform the etl operations etl i mean uh, extract transfer and uh, transform and load so actually all of these three things can be done by the data mapper itself data mapper uh, used to be called data raptor now it's been rebranded as data mapper so online you might find still references with data raptor it's the same thing um, then we have uh, integration procedure integration procedure again uh, provides data uh, it can be used to perform logic on the data that you have okay um, so whatever you used to re do in apex can be done in integration procedure as well similarly we have expression sets where we want to keep some chunk of logic separate right which can be reused and will provide different output based upon the input so for that we use expression sets and at the end we have this developer experience layer so developer experience is used majorly for deployments okay it has tools that provide developers to uh, that helps developers to retrieve and deploy applications to other orgs so we have idx workbench for that and idx build tools idx workbench is the use ui interface okay here you can click and select what components you want to extract and simply with the just we select the source or you select the target or select the components you want to deploy and just on a click of one button it will be deployed to the next org then we have idx build, build tools these are the command line interface tools so if you have worked with ci cd pipelines there you can write a command you can uh, you have to write a command right to log in into salesforce to deploy using metadata api and everything so idx build tools provide the same features for omni studio components so it has commands which can easily deploy the omni studio components available in your package 
today i'll be, i'll be focusing majorly on these components the ones that are highlighted we'll be focusing on digital experience and service management and under that also a uh, flex card omniscript data mapper and indication procedure mainly if we get time i'll talk about expression sets as well uh, but yeah majorly our focus will be here uh moving on so how can we install omni studio in orcs so omni studio is available for purchase okay it cannot be enabled in our developers org but uh, if you have the permission set license, Omni Studio can be available installed as a standalone package in your org. Okay, and uh, there was a developer org available for it for some uh, a few months back, but now that has been discontinued. Um, Omni Studio also comes pre-installed in most of our industry clouds. So you have uh, your manufacturing cloud, your communications cloud, right? All of those have pre uh, Omni Studio pre-installed. It could also be packaged with Velocity. So uh, for those who don't know, a Velocity used to be a different company, okay? Now it has been acquired by Salesforce and it is called Salesforce Industries. So what it used to do is it used to offer pre-built solutions on Salesforce platform that caters to a specific industry. So when we talk about manufacturing cloud, that is uh, catering to the manufacturing industry, right? So that's one industry uh, that's one org we can see so uh, yeah you can install uh, Velo uh, uh, you can install omni studio in uh, as as you install any other package you go to uh, app exchange and from there you can install it there's also an article online uh, which you will be able to find easily if you search how to install omni studio okay and uh, this is the partner learning camp screenshot. So if you have access to partner learning camp, you can request for a demo org, right? And there you can select the type of org you want. So for example, as, as I mentioned, it comes pre-installed with almost all the industry clouds, right? If you request for a demo org for manufacturing cloud, it will be pre-installed in that. Similarly, you'll have many other options to select from. Now, once it is installed, uh, let me show you what it looks like. This is, uh, I'll have to stop sharing in a second. Let me reshare. Okay, yeah, so this is my org. Uh, this is a demo org. And uh, once we install the Omni Studio package, we get an app called Omni Studio. This is where we perform all kinds of, uh, we create all kinds of component that we can use in our normal Salesforce environment. And this is what it looks like. Let me go over here. So this is the Omni Studio app. And we can see that it has all these tabs to create, uh, to create Omni scripts, to create flex card that we just talked about, map, data mappers and integration procedure, right? Okay, continuing with our presentation. Yeah, now I've talked about how, what is Omni Studio and why do we need it. So let's move on and see how we use it. And uh, this is where we get our hands a little dirty and we see the actual implementation that we're going to do. Uh, and we are going to do that with help of a scenario. Okay, so this is the scenario I'll just read it for you so we have a customer which is which manages the which is a financial institute and manages the payments of their clients right and uh, the payments they exist and in a legacy system an erp and all these payments are processed in the legacy system as well so the general ledger and everything that is managed in the erp now the request from our customer is that they want to see all the past payments in Salesforce as well for a particular for a particular contact that too in real time. Okay, now the key con information here in this scenario is that the data that we want to display it doesn't ex exist in Salesforce at the moment, right? Uh, the status, the other details that we want to see, this does not exist in Salesforce. So we require some sort of integration. 
and whenever you see something like this where we need to pull data from some external system you can just close your eyes and create an integration procedure or ip as we call it in short the other key information here is that uh, we need to show this information for each contact and uh, there's no interaction required much right um, it just says that the users just want to see the past payments of course and it's past payment right so there's no scope of editing a payment that has already happened so in this scenario where we just want to display the data we go with flex cards okay so let's move on and look at the so we have an integration so we must have some api as well so let's look at the api response this is a dummy api response that i've created and it has a list of it is an array array of all the payments and it every node contains some information about the payment information including the category invoice number your payment date payment amount all this information the bank details the items for which the payment was raised all this information and i'm thinking of using something like a related list you know to display this for example as we have case history over here similarly we can use a, a related list sort of structure to show this information uh, and we can add it to any record page right so i think that would be the best way to display this information and uh, yeah uh, so we, now we know that we need an ip we need to display this information is in this structure in a related list sort of structure where each row will show us one of this line item from the payment history and uh, now let's and to make this info uh, integration possible to get the information from the external system we need to use an integration procedure so i want to take a moment to talk about integration procedures here so let me go back to my slide yeah so on a high level if i say integration procedures are nothing but your functions and why do i say that because they expect except accept some input they perform the operation there and then they give us an output as well that's what a function in a, a standard high level language does right so if i have to go by the definition ips are declarative so you don't have to write a single line of code declarative uh, server side processes everything that we write in ip happens on the server side these as i mentioned fall under the service management layer and they execute uh, mul they can execute multiple actions in the same server call so if you want to read data from salesforce or external system or if you want to write some data so written salesforce objects that's all can be done through ips in a single in a single call we can even call apex but since we are talking about not using a uh, code coding so we'll just leave it at that we'll, we'll not talk about apex so everything that you can do in a function you can loop you can query some records you can perform dml try cache blocks conditional blocks all of this is possible in an ip as well and an ip uh, integration procedure can also be called from multiple sources so we have our omni scripts we can call it from api or we can directly call it from apex method as well right so let's go and see how an ip works so to simply open an ip we go to our navigate to our omni studio app from the app launcher then we have all these tabs available and we select an omni studio integration procedure let it load it so when you install omni studio you'll have some default integration procedure and a lot of components available you can ignore these for now and we to create a new one we just click on new integration procedure right and uh, then we have to provide some information to these uh, to the integration procedure to create this integration procedure we have to pro provide a name type and subtype type and subtypes are basically used to uniquely identify the integration procedures for example let's say payment is my type and subtype could be my past payments right and then you can add some description if you want 
you can ignore this data this is for tracking roll back on error if you want like if you check this everything that has happened in the transaction will be rolled back require permission so if you want to enable this uh, if you want to enable this for some specific users who have some permission so you, here we specify the name of the custom permission and you can see over here as well the name of the custom permission is required here then we have something called chainable configuration so this is uh, an important concept i would say so as i mentioned uh, all the actions that we have add over so over here you see all these are actions you can simply drag and drop these here and this will be executed sequentially right so all the actions that we add to an integration procedure they happen in a single transaction and uh, sometimes that could be a problem we so for example if you're performing a call out and before that if you are doing a dml so we you know we get a error in exception in salesforce that uh, we have uncommitted work pending right so to avoid that we have chainable configuration or sometimes we might reach the governor limit as well like without any other fault of our own uh, because it's all happening in a single transaction right so to avoid that we have something called chainable configuration and what it does is uh, if we enable chainable uh, chaining on an integration procedure um, it breaks the ip execution into chunks of transaction and it saves the interim results which can reduce performance but it would avoid you hitting the uh, governor limits so the way it works is let's say your ip is running uh, executing itself and uh, it's called from somewhere it's your omni script and uh, as soon as it reaches the governor limits for example it reaches the 100 queries limit and uh, at that point of time the transaction will break and it will be the ip will be chained okay this is what called what we call chaining so the transaction will break and then the new the steps after that or the actions after that will be performed in a new transaction you will get the result of the entire ip in at once but it will since it's a break in transaction so it will impact your performance a little but it is important in cases where we cannot avoid the governor limits um this so, um, yeah so moving forward we have some caching if you want to enable and we have cha queuable chainable limits as well so if you want to increase the governor limits um to we, you can use this option as well while calling the ip i'll show you where we use where we define this where whether we want to use chainable or not um, but yeah, this is also an option and here what we do is we define how much what's the limit for uh, For different governor limits basically so for queuable chainable we can specify how much uh, Heap size limit we want to provide if when the transaction breaks Okay, similarly here in the chainable we can specify the limit of the heap size so for uh, It follows the standard Salesforce governor limit, so that could be maximum. For example, for synchronous executions, it would be six MB at max. Um, query limits would be ten thousand. But if you want to control it, keep it, uh, give it some other number, you can do that. But it cannot exceed the maximum possible value. I hope this makes sense. And then let's move on. Let's go back to our um, scenario. Let me just open the screen. Um, so we want to create the integration procedure which does a call out. So I will. I already have this configuration over here. And uh, since we are we are doing an external call out, we need to create an in name credential as well, right? And uh, that I have created over here. So this is your normal name credential. I won't go much in detail. Just one setting you might want to enable over here is allow namespace for callouts. Here we specify the namespace of the package where we want to use it. So since the name of our package uh, Omni Studio package, the namespace of our Omni Studio package is Omni Studio, we have to use it. I mentioned earlier that it could be installed as part of Velocity as well. So this package name could be uh, different if it's part of the Velocity 
it, I think it's called velocity underscore CMT. So please verify that by going into install packages and let me search for Omnisurio and here we can see this is the namespace Omnisurio. Yeah, namespace fix. This is this is what we want to add to the name credentials. That's it. That's the only additional configuration you have to do on the name credential to use it in uh, Omni Studio. Right, and uh, then since we are using uh, a callout, so we might have some data related to that API stored elsewhere in the system, right? For that, we have something called the data mapper extract action. So data mapper is the same data mapper that I talked about uh, earlier in the under the service management layer. So in this, we create a data mapper and we just mention it over here. But this is an extract action. You can perform multiple actions through data mapper. We'll talk about it later as well, but let's just focus on this one for now. So it's called extract action and by default, it will extract some information for us and provide uh, give us the output over here right so it's nothing but your uh, query and soql you can see it, if you want to relate it to that here we are just uh, we have i've created a metadata to store the api key and i'm querying that based on the developer name now this developer name would be passed to the parent uh, node which is calling this data mapper and uh, I'll just show you the preview. This is my input parameter. And at the end, I'm getting the key that I need for the API. Right. Then we perform the actual callout over here. For that, we have something called HTTP action. Um, here it is at the bottom, you can see HTTP action. And uh, here we specify the name of the name credential. So here payment API is the is what we are calling our name credentials. You can see over here. We specify this name over here. Then we specify the path. So in my case, the path is the key itself. And this is how you define variables in Omni Studio. So we use percentage signs to specify that this uh, whatever is inside these percentage signs is our variable. Okay, and how do we get the, uh, how do we know what's the name of this? Well, from here, I show you that uh, this is the output that we are getting, right? And uh, this has some additional information. So this is where I'm passing the variable developer name. And whatever response I'm getting is being stored in this JSON node. This is the API key. So I'll actually just take a moment to explain you what these all parameters mean. So here we have the name of the data wrapper. Uh, that's, I think, clear. Then we have some input parameters. So these, some of these are very common uh, among all these actions. So all these actions, most of these actions would require an input right, to work upon. Now, since it, it's to provide data to a data mapper, we can pass data like this. On the left-hand side, in the data source, we specify the variable um, which stores the value. And on the right hand side, filter value, there we specify the name of the variable, um, which is used in your data mapper. So this developer name uh, should match with this developer name, basically. This is the variable that we are expecting uh, from the parent that is calling this data map mapper. And its value, what we need to pass, is stored in this variable. And this can also be an input from some other place which is calling this integration procedure. But usually in uh, normal pro programming languages, we have variable name on the left and value on the right hand side. But here, uh, the vari variable name is on the right hand side and value is on the left. And then we have a section called send transform response uh, transformations, send slash response transformations. Um, so when we send this information, we might have a, a huge input, right? So if your IP is being called from an Omni script, let's say, it would contain all the data 
of that on um, home script but we might not want to pass all that information to the data mapper why would we want to increase the complexity so for that we have these options uh, send json path and send json node to clip that uh, input okay so in this send json path we specify the node that we want to send so if you in read this information to trim the request specify one node of the data json to send in the outgoing request instead of sending everything uh, that we are getting in input we can trim the inputs uh, for the data mapper or for this component and then we can also reparent rename this so for example maybe let's say our data mapper expects us to send developer name right and uh, the name of the variable that we have is something else it's called integration options variable now how do we rename that uh, variable that can be done through JSON, send json node so whatever data we have we want to send we specify on the left hand side send json path and uh, what do we call what, what do we want to call that node is what we specify over here and same for the response so uh, right now our response is like we have just one variable called api key it's called key but it could be a lengthy response as well could be performing a huge uh, extraction of let's say 10 records 20 records and maybe we don't want all those records or all, all that information so to clip that response we have this uh, this response json path here we specify the name of the node that is coming in from the response and that we want to that we are concerned with that we want to keep and then again we can reparent it so what this is doing is whatever output this we are getting from this data extract action is being clipped and is being reparented to uh, with this so now if i want to use the data that i've received i will specify the name this name api key the response json node name and then if i want to access the variables within that i'll use the colon so this is all json right this in json we use dot notation here in omni studio we have we use colon to traverse the json and that's it that's the main concept and you'll see this send response transformation everywhere almost everywhere right and this is the scdp callout then we get its response um we then form multiple actions on this we can perform multiple actions like a list action is also available here so whatever response we are getting we can transform it this is like the main feature of integration procedure how it, and it differentiates itself from the expression sets through this list action so if you want to merge multiple lists your data is let's say in multiple lists but the uh, where you want to send the data that expects it in a single list so you can merge this list you can sort your data you can modify the data that you're getting so all this is possible and then um, if we have a set values action as well so this is where we define variables we set the value of those variables scroll up a little so um i've called this set values response because this is what i want to return like as i mentioned this is like a function right you get some input you process it you get you throw you give some you give back some output and And I want my out to be structured like this. So response and uh, send that response in this bit that I've got. This is where I'm forming that. You can also use expressions over here. So just like we have formula fields uh, in Salesforce, we can use some formulas for in Omni Studio as well. So you can um, Google it, you'll find an article what all functions are available. So one of those is if and is blank, you must use it in uh, Salesforce as well, normal for, uh, formula fields. And it's used similarly, like we want to specify the variable we want to check in the function. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is if the status code is not 200 or if this response is blank, whatever we have fetched payments that is empty, then I'm returning the count is zero or else i'm returning the size of this list 
and at the end this is also important response section so if we don't include this i will this is like the return statement if you compare it with the fun is with a normal apex function this is our return statement here we specify what do we want to return so instead of again returning the entire uh, json that we have built so far we, we clip the response by specifying the name of the node we want to return here that name is uh, set response to return this is what I want to return, and I space I do that by specifying the name of that component over here. Let's see the preview. So I mentioned I'll, I'm using a variable called integration operations variable, and uh, its value is this past payments. This is the name of the developer name of the metadata that I've created. If I click on execute, it performs all these actions sequentially, all of these actions. And you can see the debug of each action on the right hand side panel over here. So first it uh, got the API data. This is the data that it retrieved from the data mapper. Then it called the fetch. Uh, we can also see what was the input. So this is what we sent as the input. Then we fetched all this uh, response, we called the API and we got this response. Then we sorted the response here by the uh, amount amount field that is again defined over here if you see i want to uh, sort my list by the payment amount so and that in descending order so the maximum amount payment will be at the top and we can verify that over here as well so payment amount over here so this one has five six six five amount after that we have uh, five two fifty amount then we have 117 so all of this is sorted then we set the response we want to return and at the end we just return that so this all can be debugged and if you want to um, use different options to verify how it is working so you can set those options over here so as i mentioned you can you we can uh, set the chainable to true as well from here if you want to enable that Right, so all of this is possible. So this is just the debug mode. This is how it will look if it's called from some other source. And IPs, as I mentioned, are called from can be called from your OmniScript from other IPs as well and from Apex as well. So this is the output we are getting at the end of the execution. And now we want to use it to display it to end user. And for that, we have something called a flex card. So this is the flex card I've created. So as I mentioned, I'll be creating it like a list view. But uh, since I have a list of uh, records, um, I had to create a sub child, uh, which will do the repetitions. This is my header. So right, this has all the columns that I want to display. Then we have a child which will uh, loop on the list of views, a list of records that I'm getting. And let's go through the setup once so when we create an ip we provide its name title everything and uh, we have an important setting here over here called the repeat options so by default this is checked and uh, if you get a list of records in the ip that man uh, let's say there are 12 records uh, all those 12 this entire component will be rendered 12 times I'll show you what it means uh, from the UI perspective as well. Then we have some styling options we can set, some session variable if you want to um, keep some information valid, uh, accessible to the entire flex card and its style. So we can store that information in the session variables. Then we have exposed attributes as well. So as we add the uh, LWC components on the page, right? So you have options to set some of the peri uh, uh, variables that you define in the uh, in the template file and so similarly we have exposed have the same thing um, so if you want to take some information from the record page so you expose those variables to the record page and then you can specify that information
uh, once we add this flex card, we we have some properties that we can use to specify um, what what should be displayed, like what should be the data to be that should be sent to the child flex card. We can send data from the parent. We can specify the uh, data source on child as well. But if we want to send data from parent, that is also possible. If we have both the data node from the we are sending data from parent as well as we have specified some data source on the child, then this uh, data that we are passing from the parent is considered the child one is uh, well that is not displayed and then we can uh, select which state uh, state this entire thing that we see over here this entire block the highlighted one this is called a state okay and uh, well you can have multiple states as well and display them conditionally this is where you add the conditions for example if your data has you can add a condition where uh, if my count is zero don't show this one and display some static message that uh, no records available you can create a state by just dragging it over here or if you want to clone the existing state just click on this icon and it will create a clone of this of the state can you just specify the name add conditions if you want then said then save it that's it and then lastly we have the style tab so for each component that you add on the screen you can specify a styling for it um, for example this is a block right so the background you see is grayed so this color is, is explicitly mentioned over here the padding the uh, margin everything can be specified over here in a block a block is basically a group of elements so you can add icons you can add text everything anything you want and don't worry you don't have to specify the styling for each individual element that you add you just apply the styling on one then you click on this plus icon which will clone the entire uh, element and with all its styling and values and everything so if i click on this i hope it doesn't break anything yeah it has cloned the exact and then you can just change the data that you want to display let me delete it styling here follows the grid uh, salesforce grid so if maximum we have 12 width 12 unit of width possible and you can change it through this slider as well or you can just drag it as well so if i select this i can resize this like this Now let's move on to the child flex card. So on child flex card, we have added, I'm using the same spacing as headers so that everything aligns and looks like a related list. And here, if you see, I have the repeat options true as well. So we are expecting a list records and all those should be repeated. So that's what we have specified over here. All the configs is same. And you can see that I have an action over here as well. So I've added a block block contains each uh, individual fields that I want to display and then an action. What I, this action is doing it is opening a, another flex card, which will show the details. So here we are showing a few details of the of the Omni script, uh, sorry, of the data that we are getting. And uh, when we click on it, we have defined an action that I want to this type of the section is fly out. So I want to show a model. This model will contain a child card and the name of that child card is this. And the data used to pass that in that uh, child card is this. This is all we specify over here. And you will get to get to know all these actions and once you start using it. All right, and let me go back. I'll just activate it again and we'll see how it looks on the UI.
yeah so we wanted to show this on every uh, account uh, a contact right so this is our personal account and i've added this component over here it's doing this same fetch call and as you can see it's styling is also configured in a way that it resembles a related list and the action that we added so if i click on any row i'll see the rest of the details that are not available on the home page for example the payments items we had in our response right this is how it displayed i'm for to display the payment items i'm using the standard data table component that's available in the uh, in the flex card so that's this is what it looks like you can see the serial number here is a little off that's because i'm sorting this data as well by amount and this serial number was part of the uh, input json yeah so this is what the end result of the first scenario look like i want to show you one last thing payment details payment item No, not this one. Yeah, so I have uh, used multiple states in this uh, detailed child that we that opens up when we click on it. So, and I just wanted to show you how conditions look like. So in our row individual row we have a uh, element a node called payment type and i'm just checking for its value so if i go back to the response we have this node payment type so wherever it's eft we get a different set of values that that i'm showing on the ui and uh, wherever its value is cp payment type is vpay we get different sets of values so we get vendor name payment type biller code so but here we have branch name bank bank name uh, and all these things right so if you want to separate that that can also be done using these conditions these conditions over here you can have multiple states and you can display them there's one more state called the blank state and that so if i go over here i have this checkbox right to make it blank card state that is displayed automatically when there's no data in in the, we don't receive any data from the source or from the paint we can have only one blank card state i mean we can we can create multiple but it doesn't make sense you will only have one so we usually create one blank card state if we want to show some default data in case there's no data the default information in case there's no data okay and uh, let's move on we've discussed this I just want to take a moment to talk about the best practices. So, to, we should keep off the flex cards. So, flex cards, we should try to keep it sim simple. The more information we add, the more complex it becomes for the end users because mm -hmm. this is what the end users see, right? And we must keep it consistent as well. So, it should follow the branding and design of the org and other components that are that around it so that it doesn't stand out as, as uh, separately then we should leverage the reusability. So try to create flex card wherever you think this component can be reused. Uh, try to create uh, child flex cards there and uh, like keep it reusable. Like uh, you can use, uh, uh, this will save your development time by a lot, okay? Next up we have test, test thoroughly. So flex card, as you can see, it has multiple can have multiple states and conditions as well and uh, what is displayed to the end user depends a lot on the information that we are getting from the uh, source so try and test all the different combinations that are possible moving on to the integration procedure all the actions here are performed in single transactions so keep that in mind uh, 
uh, that means we should limit our data calls to avoid any SAP limit errors, right? We should try to keep it modular as well. So if you think there's some functions or some functionality that can be reused, uh, that then keep it in a separate integration procedure and call that integration procedure from other parent integration procedure. Uh, exit when applicable. So instead, if you ever use multiple return statements, what I mean by that, right? So if I go back here, we have this return response, right? This return response action. So use it as much as you can. If you want to exit it, exit the integration procedure uh, on some condition. Don't wait till the end then you, it's better uh, you can call it uh, asynchronously as well so when we go cover the omni script part then, then i'll show you how to call it asynchronously but if you feel like some operations for example if you're just calling an integration procedure to save some data you don't care about its uh, response or if you're uh, calling it to uh, then in that case you can use uh, asynchronous uh, invoke this in asynchronous mode okay um, yeah this was it about the oh, flex card and integration procedure I want to uh, just highlight one more thing so how I've showed you like how do we navigate how do we traverse through the JSON um, if we have a single node right this is we use colon and then we use the key but if let's say we have multiple if we have an array to traverse then let me deactivate it And let's use a uh, set values from here. I'll add it here. Okay, uh, let's say I want to know the highest amount. So after sorting, the first element will contain the highest amount so that's what i'm going to show. i'm just trying to show you how to use traverse through an array so i'll if i uh, for that i need to just mention the name of the response that i'm getting so the response is in this node right uh, this node specify this and then uh, we know that it is an it is a list an array so the way to traverse a list is we use pipe symbol and here the index starts from one instead of zero so we got to the first element in that row and then we can using colon we can uh, traverse the json node payment amount save it equals to means it's an expression that's it now it's here and if i execute it now let's go to the debug set values and this is the amount i'm getting so just wanted to cover this part as well that to reverse uh, array we use pipe symbol and uh, the index here starts with one instead of zero let me just activate this again 
okay now we move on to the second scenario where we will see how we can use the integration procedures uh, we have all seen integration we how we use omniscript and the data mapper and uh, well the scenario is something like this that instead of just viewing the information now the client requests that we want to initiate the payment from here as well okay and for that uh, we need inputs from the user like what's the amount and if when we select the list we get a list of bank accounts of available for that user and then we select the bank account to which we want to pay, make the payment and that can be done through an omniscript so why omniscript why not flex card because firstly we are taking inputs secondly it's a multi-step right so we first take to the, uh, collect the amount then we select the bank account then we select when then we submit it maybe perform some additional logic as well between uh, in between so that is the work of uh, omniscript omniscript again same we have similar set of actions uh, as we did in the integration procedure for example http action we have set values some additional actions as well set errors for example um, this is common for example data mapper extract post this is all common so what we have done over here is we are extracting the data so we are on the currently on some account we want to just display the name that uh, information related to that account that uh, for that we get we have a variable called record id that we can directly use in in our omni script and uh, then we have in omni script something called a step this is the ui that is displayed to the user okay in this we can add any component we want from here so if you want to collect some inputs, we have the section called input. I've added a text field over here. And then a, a, a currency field over here. Then we can add, so this is like inbuilt component. You can add this disclosure component over here, which user, which you can make it required as well. So user will have to select it. Uh, you can make these fields again, conditional. Uh, conditionally visible using this conditional view option and uh, even if it's required if it's conditional then uh, and the condition doesn't meet or doesn't hold to at the end of the execution then this comp component will not be visible and you will not get the required uh, validation after that you can initialize some variables using the set value uh, set values variable then on the second after you click on next uh, we are displaying some information over here so here i am i've embedded a flex card the way to do that is we go over here we pick up custom lwc component and then we just drag it over here and we specify the name of the flex card that we want to use all the omni scripts and flex card created in omni studio are actually stored as lwc components at the back end with some headers some containers okay so wherever you can use an lwc you can uh, use uh, omni studio components as well but uh, like you cannot directly add it so because these require some additional information right so your data raptor source your input source all this information so you cannot directly use it but uh, in at least in this scenario if you want to embed an omni script another omni script or another flex card so you use this component custom lwc component and then using set errors to display an error if this uh, user doesn't select any bank account then you can avoid this for now expression set here i'm basically calculating whether the amount can be auto approved or not depending on the value of the amount then at the end we are storing this information on the contact record on the record that initiated the payment this can be used to perform some additional action so let's say based on the result you get it can be auto approved you save that on the record and then using a flow you can maybe call a uh, submit it for approval 
and then at the end we have the navigate action so if you want to after this process finishes if you want to navigate the user back to some record uh, so that is possible through this navigate action let's talk about setup as well so a lot of these you will not use at all if you're just building it for internal purposes main ones over here are chart options so when we preview this you will see that a chart has been added so step chart has been added to the uh, ui so if you add that you can check this checkbox or if you want to reposition that you can use this drop down then we have the cancel options so enable cancel so every step can have the cancel button as well if you enable this option now you might face some scenarios where you want don't want to use the cancel button on every screen so for example if you're raising a payment after you have uh, submitted a payment you show a successful message that the payment has been submitted after that you would not want to use a user to cancel it right so you can define what action should be form performed on cancel uh, through this cancel options if you enable it you'll get a set of options and then save options um, so the data can be stored in between states as well so this is a step uh, you you can have an option to save this later as well so, i mean you you save the results that the data that you entered at this point of time and then later continue from the same state so if you want to enable that you check this then you define like how for how many days this should be valid then uh, this is some so if you enable knowledge you can see the knowledge articles embed knowledge articles as well and then you have styling options as well coming to the properties so individual again you can specify the set properties for individual elements over here so for example this is a currency field and here i want to show this placeholder of 0.00, .00 and i want to make it required all these are options all these are possible through this can conditionally show or hide this format this document uh, format this field if you want to if you want to mask the data that's possible all of these options are available under the properties tab and uh, let's hey, see hi, the properties of this just a quick time check okay sure i'll just take five more minutes sure thank you uh, yeah so here if you are specifying uh, that you want to embed some flex cards or some other lwc so we specified that over here and let's preview it and i'll talk about how it's working so let me select an id context id is basically a variable that's provided by omni studio which can be used to store the uh, record id as well so basically the con id of the record in views context we want to see it so here i provided the contact id and i'm extracting the contact uh, information so that is displayed over here and we can see the response of the data wrapper over here as well data mapper and this is the information we are displaying let's I mean, add some random amount agree continue so this is a flex card this is power of omni studio if you like combine all of these so this could be come this data could be coming from an external api right and you have created a flex card to display it formatted in this in this way and since it's a list of bank account it will repeat itself and you can actually select this card like this so this is all standard out of the works without writing a link, single line of code this is called the select action we had actions on flex card right that's what we are using here and conditionally we are setting the style when you submit it this will call the expression set, set that we had and over here we're getting the response like the approval level is zero based on the condition that i've specified and approval type is auto and uh, after that we are storing the data on the contact so this is the call out uh, backend action for that this is the data that we sent and this is the response that we've got the record has been saved if you go to the G data json whatever information we fetch for example we selected a bank account right so that information is available under this thought so we had a custom lwc under that selected account all this is defined on the flex card 
we put a variable name and everything and then this is the information if you want to pass it or save it on the record somewhere we, we can access it again the notation the way to access it the same you use the colon and if it's an array we use the pipe symbol and uh, it starts index starts from one this is what it looks like and uh, i want to talk about now the data mapper so data mappers are your um, etl tools these are the your dmls and soqls if you want to relate it to salesforce right we have when we create a data mapper we have four options to select the type of data mapper action that we want to perform so first one is extract extract this is just your soql query we have turbo extract as well so the difference between extract and turbo extract is that turbo extract works on a single object and can be used to retrieve related objects fields as well okay but you cannot perform multiple queries in turbo extract secondly it can does not support formulas so we'll see uh, like how it looks at the end and uh, it doesn't work where your um, output structure requires a different output requires a different structure it's a complex structure so we cannot use the book stack there as well but it performs best at runtime and it's um, it has very simple config so if you're working with one object go for it if you have multiple objects if you want to retrieve data from multiple objects multiple queries then uh, i would recommend extract then we have load load is your if you want to save something on the records and then we have transform as well so if you, we are working with json over here right so if um, we might have input in one format or one set of uh, in one set of nodes the name name of the node could be different right we might want to uh, send it to an, another component which accepts it in a different format so for that we use transform in fact we have used transform in our uh, omni script as well so this the expression that that i was using and here in the remote properties you can define uh, what you want to do with the data that we have in the omni script so before we execute this i'm transforming the data using this transform data mapper all i'm doing is um, so the my expression set accepts the input in payment amount variable uh, but from the omni script i'm getting it in the amount variable which is under a block which is under a payment details uh, step so this is um, like before calling the expression set i'm using this transforming the data and if we go to preview this is the entire JS we have on the omni script and this is the output we are getting and passing as an input to the uh, expression set similarly when we get the output output could be in a different format but we what we want could be different so for that we are using this so this is how the output of the expression set is configured but at the end in omni script we are concerned about just approval type and approval level so instead of doing all this traversal uh, or doing all this traversal in omni script we can use the transform data mapper and this is the output we get we can use formulas in our all of our data mapper except for turbo extract and then some additional form uh, additional options uh, that's it let me just show you quickly what the turbo data mapper looks like so go over here extract load yeah turbo extract you see we don't have the uh, mapping option we don't have the formula tab over here we just act and then options and preview
so here we can specify only one object and uh, then we can move the fields that we want to display or we want to send to the output uh, from here we can as i mentioned we can use related objects as well so if i if I want to display some related field of contacts so that can also be selected from here that is majorly it i think That was the uh, extract and turbo extract, and this is uh, the post data mapper. So over here we specify the object in which we want to save the data. If you specify the ID, that's an update call. If you don't specify the ID, it's a uh, it's a create call. Then we have formulas as well. So if you want to concatenate, I'm what I'm doing here is I'm getting the approval level and approval type right from expression set and uh, i'm just concatenating it in a single string and saving it in this variable name then later on where i find the mapping there i specify that this variable should be stored in this field and we're getting the id from the context id and then the end if we preview it uh, this data will be updated on the record if we go back uh, how it looks on the ui So this is a contact record. And I've added my Omnistute over here. So you can add it on a button click. You can add it directly as a component. For example, we have this action launcher, right? Similar, uh, like we add LWCs on the record page, something like that, we can add it. And if you click on it, it will display the same Omnistute. You can add amount like 80,000, agree, continue completed basically and that's that's the end that's, and if you see the note have been updated so this based on the amount i mentioned uh, the approval level required is two and the type is manual so you can use this information to invoke an uh, invoke a uh, approval process right and then we have some best practices as well uh, so for omniscript we try to again keep it simple and we don't add too much information that could confuse the user we try to optimize the server side load as well and uh, it should be consistent to our branding uh, it should be reusable if you want uh, if you're creating components using omniscript try to keep it reusable Reduce the load on client side. So all the uh, components that we have, the all the number of set values that we have, add that include increases the load. So instead of creating multiple set values, try to include everything in one. Um, these are the best practices you can follow. Uh, and uh, there are there's also a limit of the on the elements that you can add to an Omniscript. So it cannot exceed 750 elements. And uh, then you yeah, optimize the server side, which means that uh, reduce the number of fields a user must input, okay, and by pre-filling this information. So if you have, uh, if you are instead of asking user to fill every information, try to pre-fill the data wherever possible. And uh, this size here matters in the sense that we should not send entire Omniscript JSON to the backend that would increase the pay payload size and um, eventually increase the processing time as well. So try to cut down the data that we are sending to the backend using the same send transformation as we had in uh, integration procedure, right? Then for data mappers, simplify the mappings, keep them as straightforward as possible and use unique names. So if your Omniscript has a very node name, um, so try to create and you're creating a formula here in data data mapper. So try to keep different names for them so, so that your data doesn't get overridden. Uh, uh, then we are out of time. How much is left? This, this is the last slide. Sure. 
okay and then uh, keep it targeted means uh, data raptor should extract uh, data from uh, one object or basically it should be created for a particular task if it's for extraction of account it should focus only on that and we should uh, not try to extract related information this is just to um, avoid server side trips and uh, improve the improve the efficiency of the data mapper then limit the data volume using uh, filters and limits so you just like we have query limits uh, so we add filters and limits on query we can add those on data mappers as well and optimize the query so use uh, instead of querying so for example if you are if you want to access some data from the parent record right so instead of use querying that information you can use the dot notation over here uh, to uh, get that information and you can use order by and everything that's it so yeah that's it no it took a lot longer than we expected but omni this is still just an introduction omni studio is a lot it has a lot to offer and you'll get to know it as as you start working on it so uh, thank you everyone uh, so himanshi you can take over now sure thank you nan first of all like thanks for the insightful session i'm pretty sure the audience has got um, like new stuff to learn today and get uh, their journey started with omni studio so uh, i can see we have a uh, like lot of questions in q and a session we'll jump on to that but before that we'll have a kahoot quiz so i request everyone to uh, pull out their cell phones and scan the barcode i'll be sharing my screen uh, and we'll give few minutes for folks to join in and there are few uh, instructions for kahoot please use your real name no mnemonics or the nicknames use your actual name and uh, the first podium winner will be awarded with a swag so uh, whomever is whomever wins this make sure you uh, send us your email id so that we can get the swag delivered so let me share my screen now i hope my screen is visible if yes uh, can you guys please scan this barcode to join the quiz or uh, if anyone is having any issues they can also go to this site uh, kahoot.it and enter this game pin uh, to join the quiz uh, we'll get started in couple of minutes just a reminder uh, do join the kahoot quiz guys uh, there's a barcode flashing in front of your screen you can scan the barcode and if you're having issues you can go to kahoot.id and enter this game pin to uh, join the quiz uh, and we'll start shortly there are uh, 42 folks in here uh, but i can still see there's just 29 uh, people here uh, it's not for volunteers so <laughs> even if even there's no swag for you guys
all right i think we can get started uh, so every question uh, you'll get 20 seconds and make sure you're fast enough because that thing better a lot in quiz uh, with that let's get started So Shabarish is at the uh, top of the leaderboard. Uh, we'll have a lot of questions, so make sure uh, you follow it closely. So the right answer was data mapper and uh, the leaderboard still looks same the podium position let's hop into the next one So there's change in the leaderboard. Uh, so Arjun is at the top, followed by uh, Rambo. And third one, uh, I think that's not a real name. Um, we'll check at the end. So Arjun is still at the top, followed by Rambo and Shrisha. Uh, we still have uh, six more questions left, so keep on it. So now Rambo is at the podium and uh, Arjun is still on it. He's on second position, followed by Morley. So the leaderboard is still same. Rambo is leading it, uh, followed by Arjun and Moldy. Um, we're left with like uh, four more questions now. So let's get it.
so rambo is on a roll he's still leading it and uh, let's see what happened in the next three versions So most of the folks got it right and uh, we'll see how the leaderboard looks like so there's an increase in position Murli is the runner up now and rambo is still at the top uh and uh at third position we have arjun so we are just left with the two more questions All right, so we have change in position again. Now, Omorle is leading the podium, uh, followed by Rambo and Samukam. So we're just left with the last question now. So please answer it very carefully, as it might lead to change in positions at the leaderboard. All right, a lot of people got it right. So let's see uh, how the podium looks like after the Kahoot. At third position, we have Samugam. Congrats. Uh, Rambo is the runner up, and the winner is Murli. So, congrats to all of you guys. And uh, Murli, if you please uh, ping your mail in the chat window, that would really helpful and again thanks everyone for joining the session in uh and uh, i hope the session was helpful i again want to thank nand uh, for giving the session on omni studio and sharing his insights about the omni studio so let me quickly share a screen uh for the closing note like uh, how you can get connected with delhi developer group and uh, you can join our whatsapp group to get connected with us on linkedin Right, so let me share the PowerPoint for the same. One second, please. So here's how you can get connected with us, the Delhi Developer Group. Uh, you can follow our Trailblazer Community Group. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, this is our. Uh, website that you can get connected with and the question that we get a lot is how to join our whatsapp group so this is a barcode scanner you can scan it and join our whatsapp group and that's how you can uh, get connected with us and with that being said we are at the end of the session i again thank you all for joining in and uh, this was imanshu it was nice uh, having you all thank you Oh, uh, and for all the Q&A's, we're still left with Q&A, uh, so none will be taking up on that. So if you had any questions, please stick